Hello, riders and rangers. Welcome to How to Fix Samurai Part 5. Let's have a quick recap of what happened previously. Lorne is the Samurai Red Ranger and Lord of the Sheba Clan. The Sheba Clan has been fighting Nylock monsters for centuries, using the calligraphy generator innovation symbol power, CGI for short. Lorne has been marked by Deckard to duel with him for eternity. Kevin is a Samurai Blue Ranger and a self-proclaimed second hand of Lorne. He is the great-grand-nephew of Octaru, who has a grudge towards the Samurai Rangers, because he was unable to be one. Kevin is trying his best to clear his family's name, that's why he is so subservient to Lauren. Mia is a Samurai Pink and the mother of the team. She has a pseudo-rivalry with Dayu, where both share tragic love backstories. Dayu is in love with Decker before both of them became Nylocks, but Decker never show any affection towards her back. Mia is in love with a boy back home, but he has never shown any interest to her in return. She tries to gain his affection by cooking vegan foods that she pretends to enjoy. Mike is the samurai green of the team, and he has no interest to become a samurai to begin with, but later got inspired by his father, the previous samurai green, and Lauren, vowing to surpass Lauren in power someday. He also helped Antonio to produce certain zords, since his powers could create life. Emily is a Samurai Yellow Ranger, youngest and the least experienced fighter. She fears being her older sister's replacement, she will never be as good as her sister, nor any of her teammates. Antonio is the Ninja Gold of this team from the Thunder Ninja Academy. Since traditionally there can only be 5 Samurai, he still aids the team officially, but as a ninja instead of a proper Samurai. However, if he is able to find the founder of the Shiba Clan's Mosasaurus Disc, he'll be granted the rank of Samurai. With that being said, let's dive into it. Grab your calligraphones. Samurai Fortify. After ending Myron's life, Xandrid finds Dai and fixes her harmonium. He then retreats to the Sanju River. After surviving Xandrid's attack and realizing the sealing character's importance, the Samurai Rangers wonder how to deal with him and Serrator. While looking over Lauren's condition and knowing that something was wrong, Emily receives a letter from her sister. Knowing the team is outclassed by Xandrid's growing powers, Emily now has doubts on her abilities and feels like she's being a burden to the team, especially after hearing what Antonio said, who pondered loudly what it would have been like if Emily's sister became the current Samurai Yellow. Mike tells him to shut it and find the Mosasaurus disc. Antonio says he has been working to create his own Mosasaurus disc, which should be as good as the original, but the replacement disc would shatter immediately after its first few usages. Emily isn't sure if it's an analogy of her being her sister's replacement, where she would shatter soon. Meanwhile, the Nylock Beazle Bub arrives, attacking people inducing an insatiable appetite in those hit by a sand. After fighting the Azazoth Small Fries, Samurai Yellow rushes into battle with the Nylock by herself, losing teamwork. Samurai Blue and Pink dives in before Beazle Bub shoots sand at Samurai Yellow. Samurai Green and Ninja Gold rushes to Emily's aid and strikes the Beazle Bulb, but the two were hit by the Sand Blast too. The four Samurai Rangers ended up having a psychotic glutinous breakdown. Antonio is so hungry that he tries to eat Gamma as well. Nyla Beazle Bulb temporarily retreats as he's starting to dry up. Later that night, after the others were restrained because of their insane appetite, Emily blames herself for her impulsiveness, which broke up the team formation. G tells her not to feel guilty because she would have done the same thing and covered for others if they had the same fault too. Lauren wakes up and overhears Emily talking to G. Emily feels spoiled and cradled by everyone else. She feels like she's holding the team back. She also feels like Lauren has been acting strange and there's something wrong. She knows Mia figured it out, the reason behind Lauren's strange behavior, but wouldn't tell her. Mia is protecting her from that information. If it were Emily's sister, Emily believes Mia would have told her immediately. She'll have to work harder to gain everyone's recognition. These words somehow inspired Lauren. She asks where is all this coming from? Emily passes her sister's letter to G and quietly leaves the room. The next day, Beezlebub resumes his mission as Lauren heads off on her own. After G said he read the letter and explains to Emily, her sister never once mentioned she is just a substitute. In fact, her sister sees Emily as her own samurai warrior and is encouraging her to be the true Samurai Yellow. Finding her resolve to be the one and only Samurai Yellow of this generation, Emily arrives to aid Samurai Red who was no match against the Bezo Bulb on her own. She's still midway in recovery from the fight against Xandrid. Unable to use the black box due to her condition, Lauren passes the black box to Emily as she arrives to aid her. 
She transforms into Daimyo Yellow and slays Beezobub. This releases everyone from their insane hunger. After Beezobub enlarges, although not strong enough to create the Samurai Megazord, Daimyo Yellow uses the Eight Folding Zord to hold him off. The other Samurai Rangers arrives in time, and together, they form the Samurai Megazord. Soon after, Azela accepts her role as Samurai Yellow, and because of her, Lauren starts opening up again to the others. After G notices that the places that Serrator attack Para all form the kanji, which means control, Lauren becomes concerned as she and the others go through the Shiba archives for any clues about this. This part shows a Shiba Samurai knows how to read kanji except Antonio, who only knows how to write kanji for ninjutsu or seafood. He's impressed that Mike knows it as well. Mike just says he only uses it for Japanese video games. Feeling discouraged by his lack of knowledge in kanji, Antonio returns to a sushi cart and tries to make himself useful by finishing his replica of the Mosasaurus disc. Then G alerts Antonio to spy on some Nylock tremors in North Neighbor Villa. Antonio says he can also pick up a Christmas tree while he is there. On the other side of the city port, Antonio arrives and sees Serrator. Serrator gives the Nylock Pestilox the means to create the final marker. By then, Cthulhu realizes Serrator's goal, which he calls a Sabbath. He snaps out of Serrator's mind control and attempts to reason with him, as this spell would cause chaos because of the huge surge of Nylock population. Antonio overhears this and was in shock. Cthulhu also asked, how is Serrator so confident that he could control all the Nylocks? Serrator shows no fear as he reveals that Decker is part of his important tool in this plan. Since he is soaked in the powers of the Shiba CGI armor, stolen from the Shiba clan before, that will be the source of energy to amplify his spell. With Cthulhu by his side, Cthulhu will be the one activating the CGI. Also, Serrator has been collecting the CGI energies from the Rangers during each battle which could charge up Cthulhu. Antonio uses his calligraphone and calls the others, and tells them about what he has witnessed. Mike says the kanji only controls Nihilok specifically. Kevin says there seems to be more to it, as Serrator's ambition isn't just to control Nihilok's. Mike ponders if Serrator is able to transform Dai and Decker from humans into Nihilok's as well. Isn't it possible that Serrator would turn all humans into Nihilok's and become part of his singularity? With this realization, Antonio is determined to complete the Mosasaurus disc replica. Following Nylock Pestilox, Antonio reports to the rest of the team that the months of the week makes people suffer with his pain-inducing incense. He fights the Nylocks until the others arrive and fight off the Zazoth. Serrator arrives as Daimyo charges at him. Serrator holds the rangers off while sending Pestilox to continue attacking civilians. The boys were barely on par against Serrator but tells the girls to pursue Pestilox before any more innocents are harmed. As the rangers slay Pestilox, the other rangers arrive to form their Samurai Megazord to fight the second life of the Nylock. As Serrator enjoys the show between the two titans, an annoyed Decker shows up to demand his Yuramasa from Serrator, with Antonio hot on his trail. Antonio overhears more of Serrator's plans, which reveal that he will be unleashing a powerful wave of mind control dominance over all Nylock beings under one mind, Serrator's. Part of his plan includes conjuring the Sabbath. It is to send all humans across the world into true deep suffering. Most painful memories of the humans will be replayed in their minds once the Sabbath has been casted. To get rid of this pain, humans will have no choice but to give up their humanity and become Nylocks. This wave is created by invoking the ancient spell that only a person like Decker, a Nylock soak with CGI powers, can complete. Though Decker is reluctant at first, Serrator reveals that Yuramasa is made from the soul who loves him and could restore his memories. Only when the sword serves its purpose, then that soul will be freed. Serrator tells Decker to think about it and leaves. The samurai focus their attack on the Nylock general. Without warning, a massive explosion was caused from the excessive CGI power collected by Serrator, destroyed the Nylock monster, and disabled the Samurai Megazord temporarily, sending each ranger flying across the city. It wounded the rangers and Decker with Dayu barely escaping. Serrator makes his way to the center of the city to complete the single hive mind unity of the sole ruler of all there is in Aroma City Port. Once he is conscious from the CGI shockwaves, Antonio sees an unconscious Decker and is conflicted if he should kill an unarmed enemy to stop Serrator, which would also ensure Lauren's safety. However, he changes his mind upon remembering that the soul of Decker's loved one is sealed in the Uramasa blade. Only Decker could free that innocent woman's soul. He remembered what Mia told him. The soul of Dayu is trapped within that sword. At the Shiba house, 
After Lauren suggests that slaying Decker is the only way, Antonio reveals his actions to them before he takes his leave. Kevin and Mia are disappointed at Antonio's lack of will to act. Mike and Emily understands it because if Antonio slays the fainted Decker, it is against the Shiba code. The next day, the Samurai Rangers learn that Antonio went out to track down Decker, and Kevin and Mike are going after him as the others face Serrator. Confronting Decker yet not intending to harm him, Antonio pleads with them not to take back the Yurumasa and do not commit the Sabbath. However, as Decker tries to kill him for pleasure, Kevin and Mike comes to defend Antonio. Chasing after Decker as he regains the Yurumasa from Serrator in the city center, the regroup Samurai Rangers are unable to stop Decker with Serrator holding the Samurai Rangers back. But at the last second, Decker strikes down Serrator instead of the final marker. Serrator is shocked as Decker reveals that he knew the sword's nature the entire time, and he thanks Serrator for repairing it. Decker just didn't care about love, the soul, nor his memories. He is only interested in fighting, living in the prison, and enjoy the pleasures of slaughtering worthy swordsmen. Decker leaves the mortally wounded Serrator as he begs Cthulhu to heal him with the CGI. With Serrator weakened, Cthulhu being freed off the mind control quickly, he leaves, telling the rangers to aim at Serrator's headwear, which is his weak spot. Realizing his impending doom and the Sabbath is ruined, the dying Serrator takes his rage on the Samurai Rangers. With Serrator weakened, the Samurai Rangers were able to fight him on the same level as this ancient beast. They slay him with the Fire Smasher and the Bozooka aimed at his headwear as suggested by Cthulhu, and also by Xandrid a few episodes ago. Serrator enlarges and battles the Megazords. Serrator also summons the Kirigami warriors, but those were easily destroyed. The Samurai Rangers try to finish off Serrator, only for the CGI final attack to have no effect against him. Cthulhu watches the two giants battle let out against each other. On Ninja Gold's suggestion, Daimyo Red summons the Mosasaurus Folding Zord from the replica disc of Ninja Gold. But their powers are not strong enough to support the Mosasaurus Folding Zord with this replica. Cthulhu, sensing the rangers are in trouble, shares his CGI powers to the rangers, hoping Serrator to be destroyed. With a sudden boost of energy, Samurai Megazord uses the Mosasaurus Katana to destroy Serrator. After the battle, Antonio now knows the true nature of the Nylock, and he should not hesitate. But Lauren tells Antonio he did the right thing for not killing Decker. There is always another way. Unfortunately, Antonio's Mosasaurus disc replica crumples after the battle. Kevin suggests that the original disc is still out there. They wonder where the sudden burst of energy came from. When they all return to the Shiba house to find G and the caretakers in the middle of decorating for Christmas, they help with the finishing touches. Antonio also arrives with the Christmas tree he got from the North Neighbor Villa. At the Shiba house, everyone gathers for a Christmas party, the first lively one in years. But while G provides calligraphy pens as Christmas gifts, he sees a strange Shiba caretaker with a letter bearing the Shiba house crest. As the others do their calligraphy art, Lauren reads the letter and tells G that they will continue as planned and that she will handle the consequences when the time comes. Meanwhile, at the deserted Rokimo Junk, Cthulhu is glad to see Dayu returning as he confirms to her that Xandrid sank into the bottom of the Xandra River and that he shall return once he's finally rehydrated. He is almost restored to his full potential. Until then, Cthulhu summons the Nylock Fira to kill off the 18th head of the Shiba House, giving her the true Fire Asamida bullets to fight Samurai Red's Fire CGI power. The bullets will activate the CGI within the victim and burn them from the inside out with the CGI power. When she attacks the group of Azazos to bring the Samurai Rangers into the open, Samurai Red is protected by the others against her wishes. But these bullets didn't harm her teammates because they didn't wield any CGI flames within them. Having had enough of her vassals shielding her, Samurai Red uses the black box to finish the fight, barely surviving as she slays the Nylock with the Bozooka. Cthulhu is perplexed at how Lauren is able to endure the true fire of Samadhi. Samurai Red gives Samurai Blue the black box to battle the revived mega-sized Sphira. The Samurai Rangers form the Homaris Samurai Folding Zord to fight off Fira but the Nylock was able to disrupt the combination, exhausting all the rangers, breaking everything apart. Without warning, the line folding Zord suddenly attacks the Nylock on its own, as the others realize that Lauren is not the one piloting it. After the Nylock was destroyed, the vessels helped Lauren before seeing another armored ranger, whose retainer, Toshizo Danba, appears as well. 
That armored ranger ends the transformation and is introduced by Tanba as the true 18th head of the Shiva house, Crimson Shogun Ranger, Jaden Shiva. Finding Lord wounded from her fight with Fira, Antonio and the vessels arrive, demanding answers relating to Lauren from G. With G not answering, Mia concludes her suspicion on Lauren's behavior were true. Lauren is the decoy. Jaden enters and assumes his position as the true head of the Shiba house. His retainer, Tamba, explains the full story behind Jaden being the rightful lord and the 18th head while Jaden was bestowed with items belonging to the Samurai Red. Jaden says he do not wish to hide anymore. As the vessels proclaim they refuse to serve anyone but Lauren, Lauren arrives and apologizes to them for all the suffering she has caused. She claims the true fire of Samida destroyed all her flame CGI power rather than killing her. She is nothing more than a mere civilian. Mike says, once a ranger, always a ranger. But Lauren tearfully ignores him. She tells them to follow Jaden before she takes her leave. Tanba gleefully says he thought Lauren would have fought her way to stay in power and was more than happy that Lauren is so compliant. Tanba chuckles on how rare it is to see trash taking themselves out. The other rangers were disgusted by this, so is Jaden. But Tanba quickly says Lauren is now freed from the responsibility that she had been thrusted upon when she was a child. Now she is no longer affiliated with the Shiba clan, they should all cut ties with her and pretend that she has never existed. Mia realized how Lauren must have felt, so very alone and can't tell anyone who she truly is. When you rewatch Samurai knowing this twist, you'll realize Lauren is basically an underdog. Just like Leo from Lost Galaxy, or Casey from Jungle Fury, fighting to prove herself as a valid Red Ranger, while she's pretending to be Carter Grayson from Lightsweet Rescue, or Andros from In Space. The potential of her bloodline will never match the potential of the Shiba descendants, nor the retainers. This explains why the other rangers don't need to train as hard as Lauren. Lauren didn't train because she's a perfectionist, she's training because all that barely meets the minimum. Mike's short training period proves how weak Lauren truly is. The vessels realize her aloof attitude is mostly to hide herself. Mike asks why weren't they told? Tamba says Nylox cannot read minds but can feel emotions, as seen in the Nylox using insults as an attack. If the other retainers knew, Xandrit would have figured it out much earlier. Also, the Shiba clan has used the decoy before and the other retainers knew about this. The other samurai retainers despised him and never treated him like a true lord. This was felt by the Nylox and they were seen through quickly. Mike claims he never fought for Lauren because of the Shiba lord title, he only fought for her since he chose to follow her as the leader. Mia suddenly has a flashback of Decker. The reason why he turned obsessed into fighting was to numb himself from how he was looked down upon by other retainers. G asks, shouldn't the true Shiba Lord be returning after this generation's duty has been finished? Tanba announces that Jaden has returned because he has finished completing the sealing symbol. Mike then demands Lauren to fight alongside them. But Tamba also said that happened before and that same decoy became resentful towards the clan and became a Nylock. Mia chimes in and says Decker was that decoy. Tamba says, exactly. And when he was expelled from the Shiba house, he stole the ancient samurai armor from the rangers. With Tamba comparing Decker to Lauren, Antonio finally unloads his frustration and says he has no reason to stay as he is recruited into Lauren's samurai. Tamba replies, he was about to say the same thing and expels him. While the other rangers catches up to G, begging him to make Lauren stay, G says it won't happen. Lauren was one of the caretaker's children living in the Shiba mansion. When she was young, Antonia and her saw an upcoming Nylock attack, as they saw Azazos and Cthulhu enter in the backyard disabling the Shiba house securities. The two children tried to warn Tanba about the Nylock sneak attack. Antonia has a really bad reputation already, Thus, Tamba ignored the warnings and told the two to go and make up play stories some other time. That decision caused the previous lord to perish, and the retainer suffered because of Tamba. G says Lauren's presence reminds Tamba's guilt over the 17th Shiba Head's death. The next day, Jaden morphs into Shogun Crimson Ranger and leads the others against the Nylock. The four are barely able to cope without Lauren. Shogun Crimson introduces his arsenal, which shows that he could clearly fend off Nylocks without the others' help. He is a one-man army. 
Just imagine Jason Lee Scott and Tommy Oliver's MMPR days. The more mature audiences could feel the sadness and unease between the other Rangers. It shows the true awkwardness in replacing team member, unlike MMPR when they replaced the team with Adam, Rocky, and Aisha. However, the younger audiences are going to love the Shogun Ranger. Why? Overpowered and new toys. He has an awesome armor mode, could merge the bazooka with a sword to create a Shogun Spear making Mike feel inferior with his Force Spear. Jaden's Bozooka Spear CGI Blasts make Kevin feel weak as he takes out the mega-sized Azazoths at ease, while Kevin could only take out the Azazoths with his Hydro Bow. When Jaden spins his Shogun Spear, it creates a whirlwind that is way stronger than Mia, making her feel unneeded. Jaden's Shogun Spear could cause earthquakes much to Emily's surprise, and worsens her self-worth and insecurities all over again. All the team feels very demoralized with Shogun Ranger easily overshadowing them combined. And with flashbacks, this is our seasonal clip show, showing how Crimson Shogun Ranger is much stronger than Samurai Red, as he is the true successor of the Shiba Clan. Even though Jaden and Lauren's personalities are similar, the team has bonded with Lauren first. The strength of the team has a quantum leap, but it feels like it is husk without a soul. Younger viewers could see this as, wow, Jaden is so much cooler, while mature viewers would see this as, the team isn't really there without Lauren. On the other side of Oroma City Port, Antonio finds Lauren who tells him that she has nothing left in her life before she walks away. Antonio hopes to cheer her up by showing possible clues to the Mazazor's disc. As Antonio calls G about Lauren's new attitude, Lauren makes her way to her parents' grave where Decker finds her. As he has never cared about who Lauren was in the past, Decker demands her to fight. Lauren accepts without hesitation, since the only thing that's true is the duel between swordsmanship. Meanwhile, Jaden trains with the team with different CGI stroke attacks, where the group combines parts of a character to create powerful combination. He has been shown to be kind and caring to these rangers, although he's quite aloof at first, but the rangers are starting to reciprocate. The rangers also have heard Jaden never wanting to kick Lauren out of the Shiba clan, but Tanba asks if he dares to oppose his dead father's will. This made the other rangers understanding of his position, especially Kevin. As Lauren fights Decker, now that she has no more purpose in life as a stand-in for Jaden, Antonio finds G, so they attempt to find Lauren, while G tells Antonio to fight the current Nylock threat. As Lauren no longer has the fire CGI power, Decker gave her a new mode, Dark Ronin Red. To have a fantastical duel. Though the vessels offer to help, G apologizes for deceiving them and explains to an annoyed Tanba that he will see Lorne as his lord. Tanba was outraged by this, calls him a traitor, and expels G. As G leaves the command house, he finds Lorne as Dark Ronin Red fighting Decker and attempts to intervene. On the Rakumon junk, Cthulhu risks his own life to empower Gigatox in order to increase the human suffering to speed up Xandrid's reawakening. Cthulhu is risking his own life because seeing how powerful the Crimson Shogun is, he's very scared. He has never seen such a powerful Samurai Ranger before. Alerted to his presence, the Samurai Rangers arrive as Ninja Gold is overpowered by Gigatox. After they manage to slay the monster with Super Belzuka, as Antonio looks in frustration, Antonio asks how could Mike follow this new leader in replacing Lauren. Mike responds it would be way easier not to follow this new lord if he was a hateful person. The Samurai Rangers use a Samurai Megazord to destroy the powered up Gigatox. However, the Nylock is revived into a more powerful form and a Samurai Megazord is formed to battle it. Elsewhere, the two duelists has been separated as they fall off a waterfall. G finds and explains to Lauren that while he raised her to be a decoy, he refuses to break his word to Lauren's mother that he would look after her daughter. By then, Decker arrives as Lauren resumes the fight against G's pleas. Decker is enjoying the battle, but knows Lauren is still not throwing away her humanity. Then he realizes what is the ticking point to push Lauren into becoming a Nylock. Decker kills G in front of Lauren, her only connection to her true self. She whispers something to Lauren as he dies, which breaks Lauren, and she focuses all her strength in defeating Decker. After the Samurai Rangers finally manage to destroy the Gigatox, the vessels learn from Antonio about Lauren's duel against Decker. As the others run off, with an emotionally conflicted Kevin remaining behind, Samurai Red and Decker's duel reaches its climax. Antonio was badly wounded from Gigatox's attack earlier. 
Mike and Emily call some caretakers to sneak him back into the Shiba house to nurse him back to health. As Antonio is being taken care of, he overheard Jaden trying to defend Lauren as Tamba berates her. Jaden felt remorseful for returning because it felt like he destroyed a family. He wants Lauren to come back, but Tamba told him it is the traditional way and it's wrong of his fellow rangers to feel that way. Which Jaden says, the world doesn't revolve around the Crimson Ranger. Tamba says, how can Jaden face the 17 spirits of the Shiba heads when Jaden dies? What Jaden is suggesting is against filial piety, disrespecting his ancestors, and defying societal expectations. Jaden can handle Nylox on his own and technically didn't even need his own team. Jaden always wants to save people. That's why it's normal for the Rangers to revolve around Jaden, says Tamba. Jaden is a true hero, but Jaden says it felt very cowardly to hide. It also felt like the Shogun Ranger has weakened the team morale by replacing Lauren, and he feels awful about it. The team dynamic was quite off and Rangers kept on being injured left and right. It's always him finishing off the villains. It's almost like those annoying red-centric seasons where the Red Ranger is the only character while everyone else is just a background billboard. Seeing how much Jaden cares for this team, Antonio has a change of heart. The epic duel between Dark Ronin Red and Deku reaches its climax. Dayu senses the conflict as well as the premonition that Xandrip may be awakening soon. The vessels leave to find Lauren, but Kevin stays behind, plagued with stealth doubt. Behind him, two caretakers, Eugene who helped him retrieve the Sevilla's folding sword, reveals himself to Kevin. And another caretaker removes his hood and shows that he is Mr. Bulk. Mr. Bulk was actually a caretaker looking after the rangers since they've arrived. The two remind Kevin that only he could truly decide his own fate, reminding that he has chosen who to serve, not his parents. Many caretakers also motivated Kevin to find Lauren. Kevin thanks everyone, Bulk and Eugene. And Eugene corrects him. Strangers calls him Eugene. Friends calls him Skull. By nightfall, a badly injured Ronan Red manages to deliver what seems to be a mortal blow towards Decker. But the Nylock revives, stating his ideology to Lauren. Her identity is to duel with him. That's all that matters. She began becoming more and more Nylock overnight, even having certain transformations shifting here and there. Then when the fellow rangers arrived, they snapped her awake and helped her held onto her humanity. She is still a family. Even if that title was fake, the emotions were real. The other samurai rangers except Kevin arrive and tell Lauren that she has much more to live for than she thinks. Then G's voice and image still lives in her head. He still acts as her conscious, speaking to her, cheering her on to push away her Nylock side. Lauren stops her Nylock rage. She'd much rather die as a human than becoming a Nylock. Decker beckons her to discard her humanity again. Lauren refuses and said, I pity you. You must feel lonely, right? Decker enraged. He growled that he doesn't need friends or love or anyone. He has achieved to become the ultimate swordsman from his own hardship. Of all people, Lauren should be able to understand this the most. And to Decker, Lauren has been defeated due to unwillingly able to stand alone. Her friends made her weaker. Lauren smiles and says, no, it has made her stronger. At least, she can die knowing she is cared by her friends. And she cares for them too. Before Decker could deliver the killing blow, he's shocked to discover that Yuramasa has pinned his foot to the ground and will not budge. Kevin arrives and helps his teammate take Lauren to safety as Decker slowly perishes, lamenting the fact that he has been denied his only pleasure. Decker sees a vision of Dayu in human form, her soul telling him even to his last breath, she has always been there for him. Surely, he should know that his strength unknowingly came from a secret admirer, Dayu. Yuramasa remains planted upright in the ground as Decker's body slowly dissipates. As he finally acknowledges Dayu's care might have helped him with strength and he threw her kindness and care away just for his lust for violence. This went against his self-made swordsmanship which disgusts Decker and thus he perishes and disappears. While Lauren passes out from exhaustion, before she passes out, a ghostly figure appears before Lauren. He says, you will find my missing Mosasaurus disc. Her head was then flooded with different visions of where the disc is. Back on board the Rokumon junk, after learning of Decker's death, Dayu realizes that her repaired Shamisen may complete Xandrit's reawakening, and it barely holds onto what little was left of Decker. She decides to hide in the human world. Cthulhu speculates Dayu's decaying Nylock body could be of use to Sandrit since she's still partially human. 
He wrote a CGI symbol power that allows Xandrid to gain a special ability if he can absorb the human essence of Dayu. Cthulhu tells Xandrid they have to hurry because Dayu's body is not going to last long when Decker died. Her soul will be released from the Yuramasa. As Xandrid is in search of the dying Dayu for the secret power upgrade, Xandrid sends a new Nala commander to take his place for now. The next day, Lauren picks up the Yuramasa and passes it to the rangers. Lauren tells her former vessels to leave her and pass the sword to Jaden. Mike kneels before her, and Kevin reminds Lauren that he and the others had sworn their loyalty to her, not the Shogun Ranger. Kevin also personally willingly submitted to Lauren because Lauren defeated him mercifully when he was controlled by the Nilox. Any other lord would have discarded him and had him be destroyed. Mia then reminded Lauren that despite her not being the 18th head of the Shiba clan, everything Lauren built up as herself properly exists. Lauren looking back at her memories with her friends explained that she feels the same, then starts to shed a tear. Lauren then suddenly sees the ghostly figure again, which she can clearly see was a Shiba samurai lord, ancestor of Jaden. The spirit tells her to remind his heir to use the symbol hidden in the upcoming new commander, as he has prophesied his return. The visions of what she saw flooded her mind again, this time much stronger and more clear. But before the rangers try to recruit Lauren back into the team, she tells them she's tasked to find the Mosasaurus disc with Antonio. Rangers argued about its existence, but Lauren stated that it is real, and since the ghost of the first Shiba Lord has appeared in the vision before her, also, she wants to finish G's final wish. Earlier on, in his dying breath, G sent Lauren to find the Mosasaurus disc, hoping this will aid her in not giving up on her humanity. Suddenly, they receive a call that a group of Mega Zazoth have appeared, and Jaden, with Antonio by his side, has already engaged them in the Megazords. While the other vessels fight the Azazoth company, and while an untransformed Lauren helps the Shiba caretakers bring civilians to safety, when the Mega Monsters were destroyed, they returned back to the mansion. The rest of the team regrouped with Jaden and gave him the Yuramasa. Jaden recognizes the sword and was able to retract the CGI power of armor from it, but it is still not ready yet. Together, they face down the new Nala commander. He is as strong as Xandrid. He was sealed by the ancient Shiba lords centuries ago, but he has recovered after resting for centuries in the bottom of the lake. The two sides were at stalemate and retreated. When Tamba saw Antonio, Jaden says Antonio is a worthy ninja warrior and should help the Shiba clan, which quite Tamba up as it is not against Shiba traditions to have external help. Antonio asks for permission to go hunt for the Mosasaurus disc along with Lauren. Jaden approves. Later, Antonio meets Lauren, and Lauren tells him about the ghostly visions she has received, and Antonio uses those clues and cross-referenced with his research. Antonio and Lauren were able to narrow down to the location of the disc, but it is deep behind enemy territories. After sneaking into that territory, Lauren found the Mosasaurus disc with Antonio's ninja skills. However, when the two tries to activate the Mosasaurus disc, nothing happened except the same ghostly vision of the first Shiba Lord appeared. When the battle between the Samurai Rangers and giant armies of Nilox are occurring again, the team barely made it out with swarming of his Azoths, which badly injured most of them. Fortunately, the two were able to pass it to Jaden. Due to Jaden's injury, he cannot use his Shogun mode until much later. Lauren says she saw the ghost of his ancestor, and she tells him to use the symbol hidden inside the new upcoming Nala commander. Jaden activates the disc, and the disc displays the same message of the ghost of the Shiba Lord, telling his descendants will be able to use it once he finds a special character within that Nala. Later in battle, Jaden morphs into Samurai Red and leads the team to fight the new commander, and the Samurai Ranger wins thanks to unlocking the powers of the disc. When the CGI and the Mosasaurus disc met, Samurai Red transforms into Mosasaurus mode. After this battle, Jaden sees Lorne as a worthy ranger of the Shiba clan and gave her a position as a Samurai scout. He will send her on missions where it is seen as off-worldly. Also, Lorne gives Antonio credit for helping her. Therefore, Jaden accepts Antonio as his ninja Samurai retainer, which Antonio gladly accepts, despite Tamba's protests. The Ronan powers within Lauren has dissipated. Lauren is now sent away, tasked to retrain her CGI flame power with Decker's Yuramasa. While Cthulhu worries about the recent events in the Sanjur River, he's worried that there might be a power vacuum since the commander has been defeated and Xandrid is still recovering. The next day in the mortal world, the Shiba clan holds a funeral for G. A year after defeating the Vinjix virus in the RPM universe, the Ranger Operator series tracked the remnant of the virus in the body of Professor Cog with Dr. K watching. However, after defeating the RPM Megazord, Professor Cog opens up a dimensional rift that sucks the RPM Rangers and RPM Zords to different universes and in different time periods. Benjix tries to recruit Dr. K, but she escapes and ends up falling into the dimensional rift as well. 
Soon after, while finding themselves fighting grinders, Samurai Rangers encounters RPM Red as he helps takes out the grinders on his own, much to the Samurai Rangers' surprise. Soon after, the Samurai Rangers bring Scott Truman and Dr. K to Jaden, but Jaden and Scott Truman are unable to work together due to their conflicting personalities. Scott is hot-headed and competitive, which Jaden sees as something incompatible between the two teams. Since this case is an off-world assignment, Jaden assigned this matter to Lauren, and he refuses to be in any part of this. Dr. K gave the Rangers an update on the events after RPM's season finale. A weaker version of the Vengex virus somehow managed to enter a lab and use their equipment to rebuild a primitive version of its body, which is the same build as Black Beetle Borg. Yes, the same version back in Forever Red. The Vengex virus is a remnant code of the Machine Empire from Zeo. Dr. K tries to trace the virus's source, but nothing was found. Unless it somehow infected the RPM Morpher and Trojan horsed its way into the rest of her equipment. Fortunately, the Morpher's storage space is much smaller than the entire Vengex virus that the RPM has faced off against. The size comparison of the RPM Morpher to the Vengex virus would be a glass of water to an Olympic-sized swimming pool. General Vingix also built a robot called Professor Cog to challenge the Ranger's Megazord. And right now, its code is still developing, and it's growing stronger by the minute. Lauren sees Scott being too impulsive and way too flashy. She believes that Scott should follow the Shiba way of planning or leave. Annoyed by her arrogance, Scott drags Dr. K out, but Dr. K later wanders off. Meanwhile, a caretaker gives Antonio a time capsule from Angel Grove which contains a letter not to be opened until 3,000 years into the future. Antonio just pockets it without thinking much about. Entering the Samurai Rangers universe, General Vengex then seeks out to kidnap Dr. K. She was eating at Antonio's gold sushi cart and she wants nothing to do with this plan. Enraged, foot soldiers were sent to capture her, but she was protected by Antonio who morphs into ninja gold, saying, His customers will not be disturbed by any hooligans, even if they're robots. Not up to his full strength, General Vingix chooses the closest parallel world to enter into, and ended up in the Zanja River. While he was there, in the Zanja River, General Vingix arrives to make the Nilox an offer to hand him their waters to bring the mortal realm in order to power his Vingix plant, and in return, he would flood the world with waters of the Zanja River. While Antonio is fighting the grinders before RPM Red and the other Samurai Rangers, Lauren and Jaden arrive to support Ninja Gold, Professor Cock and General Vingix also enters the fight along with the Nilox monster and his company of his Azoths. Professor Cog then uses his dimensional drift attack again. The vessels, the Nylock monster of the day, some his Azoths, and some grinders got sucked into the dimensional rift. Before being sucked in, the rangers saved Lauren, Jaden, and Scott from Professor Cog's attack. The group was separated in that attack, and Jaden takes Dr. K to have sanctuary in his Shiba house to get her patched up. Scott and Lauren ended up in the lake, where Scott saved Lauren from drowning. Being sent 3,000 years to the future, Ninja Gold meets RPM Yellow and RPM Green who is working with Jim from Time Force, an mutant camp refugee. There we learn Time Force is trying to help and be inclusive of mutant kind. Earlier, Jen and the two RPM Rangers were working on calculating their time traveling and aid them to return back to their era. They are waiting for the computer to finish the calculations, but they got into bad timing since the Azazos and Grinders were also caught in that time portal attack. They were taking over the time machine station. Jen and the RPM Rangers fought against the foot soldiers to stop them, while Antonio uses his digital CGI to encode time traveling capabilities into the RPM engine cells. Meanwhile, Samurai Green and Yellow were sent back to Angel Grove during the colonial times. They met RPM Black and Blue, who were with a town sheriff, Tom, the clone of Tommy Oliver of MMPR who remained in the past. Tom Oliver places a letter drafted by Samurai Yellow in a time capsule, but they were attacked by General Vingix and some foot soldiers. Mike was badly injured trying to defend his allies. Tom Oliver tries to help him out. However, Tom's morph cannot be sustained because his morpher has not been recharging properly since his last battle, and he keeps demorphing, like Adam in Power Rangers in space. Retreating the battle, Tom passes his dragon coin to Mike, saying the coin has special healing attributes. While Mike was resting, the rangers were all defeated and captured by the enemy. Fortunately, Mike was healed by the coin, and he enters the fight and fought for his allies. And with a kanji symbol he saw in his vision while he was being healed by Tom's power coin, he wrote it and transforms into Samurai Green Dragon Mode. Mike frees his friends and faces against General Vingix and his Azoths. The other rangers were amazed by the spirit of Mike as he single-handedly takes out all the monsters. Samurai Green crushed the General Vingix single-handedly. A tribute to Tommy, Jason, and Zack when they used the Dragon Shield during the glorious days of MMPR. 
Meanwhile, some of the rangers ended up in Ninja Storm Ninja Temple. Samurai Blue, Samurai Pink, and RPM Gold and Silver met the visiting teacher, Ninjor, and the principal, Ninja Storm Green R Samurai Ranger, Kam Watanabe. They fought against the incoming foot soldiers who were from the Samurai Dimension. The rangers learned how RPM technology works along with CGI and ninja powers, making devastating attacks. Kevin and Mia wonders how the other rangers could rescue them, but Gem and Jima tell them not to worry and activated a transmitter homing beacon so the other RPM rangers could know where they are. Ninja and Cam use their powers to amplify the signal. Samurai Pink and Blue decide to help along and make the signal even stronger through their CGI power. Back in the Time Force space 3000 years in the future, once the Time Machine station was cleared off Azazoth and Nihilox, the RPM rangers also found out RPM Gold and Silver's homing beacon transmission backed by ninja and samurai powers, and they told them where they could pick up the rangers from the ninja temple. Antonia and Jen got to work. When Antonia asked Jen about the year in the future they are in to complete the calculation's final steps, Jen's answer reminded him about the time capsule he has received from the caretaker earlier. It is actually the same letter written by Emily and was stored by Tom Oliver in it during the colonial times of Angel Grove. The letter told them the time and coordinates to pick up the rangers from the past. Back in the current timeline, as Lauren and Scott Truman managed to resolve their differences, which Jaden wouldn't even thought of compromising, the two learned that Jaden and Dr. K have been captured and kidnapped. They're being held at Lantau Peak. This actually shows how a highly trained veteran like Jaden would be so strong against fighting demons, but is so weak against fighting robots. It's a trap with an entire army of his Azoth and grinders waiting for him. Turns out, Jaden's Shiva Mansion CGI security is effective against Nihilox, but not towards evil machines. Professor Cock boasted that he took the legendary samurai armor and was able to merge himself with it. With the power of the Sanju River waters, he will have enough power to take over both worlds. However, when Lauren disregards the safety of hostages for the sake of the world, RPM Red is forced to fight Samurai Red. As Professor Cock watches that his enemies are fighting each other, he soon discovers that the fight is only a diversion to allow Lion Folding Zord to help Jaden and Dr. K escape, as the RPM Zords arrive with the other RPM Rangers and Samurai Rangers within them. Together, the two Ranger teams defeat the Grunts while Samurai Red and RPM Red take to the road to battle the Nihilox General giving RPM Red the Mosasaurus disc so he could become RPM Red Mosasaurus mode as Samurai Red becomes Daimyo Red, the two are later joined by the others and they slay the Nihilok. Enlarging with his revived aid, Professor Cog escapes to the moon where the Vengex plant is, using the Nihilok as a shield to escape the Engine Folding Zord team attack as they form Samurai Megazord and RPM Megazord while he hooks himself up to the Vengex plant to achieve his full strength. The two teams are powerless until they found out that Jaden's samurai armor possesses the power to combine swords of the different teams together. The RPM and samurai team reconfigure themselves into samurai formation megasword to destroy Professor Cog. Soon after, the RPM rangers head off back to the RPM world to rebuild their society, wishing the samurai rangers luck in keeping their world safe. Jaden also dispatches Lauren to help the RPMs just in case if there are any Nihilox who has escaped into their realm. And also, Lawrence's CGI power should be able to support the RPM Rangers for now. The Samurai Rangers were very content, especially Mike, thinking fighting Nihilox would be an ease when Samurai armor is to its completion, so they'll all be armored Samurai Rangers. However, it will take time for the Samurai armor to be fully rendered. Antonio also took notice there was another note from the time capsule from Tom Oliver to Mike, who gave Mike his blessings as the newest heir to the Green Dragon Shield powers. Antonio passes this letter to Mike, in the next episode, Kevin and Mike figure out that they could use Jaden's temporary ancient samurai armor CGI to create multiple daimyo modes with Mike's CGI potential power. Mike finally understands the true power of the tree symbol power, propagation. He can make all samurai rangers use daimyo mode at the same time. While Mia was out for jog, she finds Dayu and morphs into daimyo pink. She calls for the other rangers and engages Dayu. After daimyo pink apparently strikes her down, Dayu reveals that her shamisen had taken the killing blow and had been destroyed. Dayu tells Daimyo Pink she has lost the will to live and is fine to be ended this quickly, since she is going to disappear soon. However, the remnant of Decker's dying anguished soul, now finally freed from its confinement within Dayu's damaged shamisen and with centuries of pain, unleashed the Sandra River waters to the human realm. Without warning, Xandrid appears and reabsorbs her into his body before she perishes. Xandrid demands to face the Shogun Ranger as the other rangers arrive. Jaden quickly takes the high ground and stays away from Xandrid, 
As he readies for the sealing powers, the other rangers manage to all transform into daimyo mode to hold off Xandrid as the master calls upon his Nylock foot soldiers. With the daimyo mode, they easily take out the Azazoths like they are nothing and keep Xandrid from Jaden. Emily was the first one to be taken out by Xandrid. Even her with the daimyo mode spin attack was no match against his howling technique. A huge turbulence was caused when Xandrid uses his nether wind attack against Mia's CGI wind attack. Xandrid's hurricane of netherworld wind and fire overpowered Mia. Xandrid launches fireballs at Kevin and he retaliates using his water CGI against the flames of the netherworld. In the steam created by the attack, Xandrid jumps out of nowhere and sucker punched an unsuspecting Kevin, knocking him unconscious. Antonio arrives to face off against Xandrid with his super speed, but Xandrid easily retaliates and crushes Antonio's leg. Out of nowhere, Mike jumps in using daimyo mode with a spear attack. Xandrid was surprised, but quickly fights back. He snaps the forest fear and blasts Mike with his howling technique. Mike dodges and Antonio throws the Mosasaurus disc at him. Mike transforms into Mosasaurus mode and uses long range attack against Xandrid. Xandrid fired fireballs at Mike who uses the Mosasaurus katana like a whip to keep the fireballs away from him. But Xandrid then rushes to him and grabs Mike, slamming him to the ground. Thinking Mike has been finished, Mike uses the dragon coin before he slammed him and transforms into the soul of the dragon mode, which protected him from Xandrid's devastating attack. Mike uses the dragon dagger and Mosasaurus katana to attack Xandrid simultaneously and it pierced Xandrid's chest patch, which he had absorbed Dayu in. Xandrid then backs off a bit and falls onto his knees. Before Mike could deliver a devastating blow, Xandrid surprises him and blasted Mike with unrelenting amount of Netherwind, powerful purple wind blast which demorphed Mike. Just as the vassals are defeated, Jaden successfully unleashes the sealing symbol power onto Xandrid. But the sealing character fails as Xandrid reveals that he has absorbed Dayu's human aspect to protect himself. Xandrid left at the Shogun Crimson and the two were evenly matched. After being able to counter everything Xandrid threw at him, Shogun Ranger easily overpowers Xandrid. Sensing Jaden's guilt in letting his vessels take all of the Master's devastating blows, Xandrid calls the Shogun Ranger a coward, using his rangers as human shields as he hid himself away from the front line, as he is locked safely away from the battleground throughout the entire time. Isn't he shameful? This made the Crimson Shogun lose composure. Rather than attacking elegantly like before, he was attacking without any grace, just pure and adulterated anger with unplanned strikes, losing formation. Xandrid takes advantage of this and sucker punches the Shogun Ranger. Once the Shogun Ranger was on the ground, he was knocked back into Samurai Red mode. Xandrid then sent Fire Blast unrelentlessly with his Netherworld Flames, nearly destroying the Shogun Ranger. But Lauren arrives just in time from the RPM world to cover their escape. Later that night, Jaden requests a private audience with Lauren. Lauren claims she has taught the RPM Ranger to deal with the Nylocks through the use of CGI powers and was returning to see if she could help. Admiring her for such loyal friends and seeing that the plan he was brought up on has failed, Jaden decides it is time to make it official to everyone, adopting Lauren as his daughter and successor, passing the head of the Sheba House to Lauren and also granting her the title Princess Samurai Red. This makes Lauren the 19th head of the Sheba House and once more, the leader of the Samurai Rangers, much to Tamba's dismay. Jaden took out the Mazuzaurus disc and told him she found it with the Ninja Samurai. The ghost of the Shiba ancestors also bestowed the secret in defeating that new Nyla commander. This proves that his ancestor have seen Lorne as worthy of carrying on the title of the Shiba Lord. With Tamba's elderly age, how would Tamba ever face the ghost of the previous 17 Shiba Lords when his time has come? That immediately silenced Tamba's protests. Then finally, Tampa asks, how can Lauren fight? She has lost all her CGI power from the Samadhi True Flames and the Ronin powers has been exhausted after the events of the crossover with RPM. Lauren tells him that Dr. K has incorporated RPM technologies that took the Yuramasu of Decker's remnant CGI power and used it to restore his Lauren's. Meanwhile, Xandra pays his final respects to Dayu. He begins his attack on the mortal realm as the Sanju River overflows into the living world. With Lauren announcing a strategy of all-out battle, they can use the power of the legendary samurai armor sparingly to save their strength while charging head-on against Xandrid and his forces. Mike suggested they will attack Xandrid's weak spot that he has created to be immune to the stealing symbol power, as Mike has discovered that weak spot while dueling against Xandrid. The samurai rangers march towards their final confrontation with renewed confidence. In this two-parter finale, Lorne explains with the help of Dr. K, the armor symbol CGI is ready for use but it will require to use the daimyo powers and the dragon coin as well. 
This grants the rangers to become armored samurai rangers. As the samurai rangers battles thousands of Azazoths and Nylox at ease, and then they face off against Andrid. While Ninja Gold and the vassals hold off the Nylox forces, Lorne attempts to use the Shiba house disc on Zandrid. But Zandrid resists, and the powers only graze the weak spot. Zandrid blasted from all sides, which destroyed the Azazoths and knocked the rangers out of their morph. Zandrid decides to break the Samurai Ranger's fighting spirit and becomes enraged that they refuse to show weakness to him. He then leaves the battle and kills Jaden directly. As Zandrid leaves, Tanba arrives to hold off the Zazoth, allowing the Samurai Rangers to recover and defeat them. Tanba also gives him another Shiba House disc, which Jaden risks his well-being to create. Tanba showing his acceptance to Lorne being the next Shiba Lord gave her his own double disc. Leaving Gamma with Tanba, the Samurai Rangers chase after Zandrid. The five Rangers transforms into Daimyo Rangers as Lorne transforms into Mosasaurus mode. The Daimyo overwhelm the incoming Azazoths and Samurai Red whips the Azazoths guarding Zandrid. She then uses the double disc to summon two Fire Smashers. The Samurai Rangers manage to overpower Zandrid with the CGI power Bind, a move taught by Jaden. While Lorne and Zandrid were locked in place, out of nowhere, Kevin enters using the Shiba House disc to deliver the Death Blow. Assuming his second life, an enlarged Zandrid overpowers the Samurai Rangers in Samurai Megazord, even they were using the ancient Samurai armor. Under Lorne's guidance, Samurai Megazord charges Zandrid head-on, as he breaks off the Folding Sword combination until only Samurai Megazord remains. Lorne then takes the opportunity to remind her vessels that no matter what happens, she is glad to have fought alongside them, a sentiment that this vessels return. Mike thinks of an idea which would work but sacrifice the control over all their zords. Antonio says if they sacrifice the powers of bonds between the discs and zords, this could create enough powers of the CGI to destroy Xandrid. The Samurai Rangers demorphs and redirected all their CGI powers in one grand finale strike, successfully destroying Xandrid for good. With Xandri's demise, the Xandri River withdraws from the mortal realm as Cthulhu goes down with the Nylock boat. The Samurai Ranger's swords then disappear back into the wild, except the main five folding swords. With that bittersweet ending, Kevin says it will take another generation to retrieve these swords again. By the end of the series, Lauren finally found a place she belongs to, having a family. She no longer needs to be aloof towards the other Samurai Rangers. She can be something more than just a lie. Jaden takes his leave with Tamba and leaves with Lauren with the task of continuing the Shiba House's fight against the Nylocks. Tamba proposes Jaden to choose his bride to fulfill his family duties, which Jaden tells him it's way too soon. Mia was able to let go of her Prince Charming from her home and move forward. She became the elder sister of the group to take care of everyone, which in return helped all the Samurai Rangers grow. She'll move on away from cooking vegan foods and focus on her passion, being a teacher Kevin was able to uphold his family's legacy. He was able to guide his fellow rangers to victory, mentoring and nurturing them. Also, Kevin can finally return back to his Shakespearean acting days. Mike originally wants to be a relaxed superhero who only wants to fight for himself. He learned how to be altruistic. Like Kevin, he learned justice to become the strength of someone. The kindness lend a hand to someone. The courage to protect someone. The strength to fight for someone. It was revealed that he admires Kevin at the end, and rather than just being better than Lauren, he wants to be the best version of himself. Mike also passes the Dragon Sword coin to Lauren when he returns his calligraphone. Through everyone's support, Emily no longer sees herself as just a replacement, but embraces the role of being a true samurai, and that in return would make her sister proud. Antonio wants to be more than a craftsman. He learned how to be a samurai through studying and hard work. He wants to be there for his best friend Lauren, so nobody would suffer the same tragedy as the two had. He was unable to be there for her after his family left. The vessels kneel before Lauren, but Lauren tells that her friends do not need to bow down to anyone. The team celebrated their victory together, and the vessels return back to their normal lives. Lauren bids farewell to her friends. Antonio heads back to the Thunder Ninja Academy to complete his shinobi training. Emily returns home to take care of her sister. Mike leaves for college. Mia finally accepts her parents to go live with them in Hawaii. And Kevin resumes his Shakespearean drama career. Until the dialogue resurface, Lauren will remain on watch for them while Lauren finds a symbol power left by Mike. Turns out, Mike's plant CGI power has brought an echo projection of G. Although it is not permanent, it's long enough for G to say goodbye. This was a skill he has learned from Lauren when she sent a symbol power to the boy who was reminiscing about his grandfather. The last moments of G shows his will for Lauren. He took her to his office and showed Lauren files filled with list of activities to give to his lord for a hobby outside of being a samurai after the Nylock threat is over. Lauren also holds on to the dragon coin and passes it to the caretaker. She tells them to return this coin back to the modern day user. 
Before the season ends, two caretakers overwatch Lauren as she tries to ride G's motorbike. The two lift up their hoods revealing that they are Bulk and Skull. They recap how the Samurai Rangers grew as they watched Lauren stumbling the motorbike. Mr. Bulk says it's good to be back to work at the Shiba house with Eugene, looking after the Samurai Rangers. There was a flashback. G told Mr. Bulk to pretend to be a civilian who wants to join the Rangers, which would motivate Kevin to be more accepting of Antonio. Mr. Bulk and Eugene were in the shadows, cheering the team on behind the scenes the entire time, since episode 1. Now in modern times, Eugene tells Mr. Bulk there is an old friend they have to visit in Angel Grove as he holds out the dragon coin Lorne has gifted him. Thanks for watching. It has been a long journey but I'm glad How to Fix Samurai is finally over. Thank you everyone for your patience and your support. What did you think of the series? What other seasons should I fix? Comment below and let me know your thoughts. Remember to like this video and subscribe. See you next time, riders and rangers.